All right, I think we'll make a start. Um, so welcome everyone to the Sandrig webinar. Um, today, we're lucky enough to have three presenters, so they're each gonna be speaking for five to 10 minutes, um, just speaking a little bit about their experiences at Luna this year and the Ex Libris Technical Seminar. Um, we'll be starting off with Sue Harmer, who's the Manager of Application Support Unit at UNSW. Um, and she's gonna be talking a bit about her impressions of the conference, the technical seminar, and including a little bit about how sites are leveraging the APIs, um, and also the uh, how they're undertaking performance monitoring. Sue will then be followed by Megan Lee, who's the Applications Librarian from Monash University. Um, Megan's gonna be speaking about implementing some of this new information um, that's been learned at the technical seminar, um, as well as some thoughts about the um, Ex Libris strategic direction for Alma and Primo, so that will be interesting. And then finally, last but not least, we'll have Joanne Rowan, who's a serials catalogue at the University of Auckland. And Joanne's going to be presenting some Alma highlights from the product working group uh, licensing report. Also talking a bit about the Ex Libris session on the community zone, um, talking about Serial's predictive check-in, and also a bit about macro products um, being used by the University of Washington. So I'm looking forward to these. Now just a quick uh, couple of logistics before I hand over to Sue. Um, as you can see, we've got three pre presentations today. We're gonna go through them without pause, but we will have time for questions at the end. So I've got everybody's microphones uh, muted at the moment, but I can open them up as people want to uh, ask questions. Um, probably what I'll do is just turn all the microphones on and see how we go. If it gets too noisy, I'll mute them again and then people can send me a chat message if they have a question. Um, we are recording this session and we'll make it available on the Android site within a few days. So we'll post out the, uh, the link to the listserv. Okay, so without further ado, hopefully the technology all works and I'll hand over to Sue. Okay, thanks Jason. Hi everyone. Um, the Ex Libris Technical Seminar and Aluna 2015 were held the first week of May. The Technical Seminar was the first two days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, and Aluna followed Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of that first week. Um, the Technical Seminar um, was attended by around 190 libraries, um, around 250 people from those libraries participating, as well as 30 Ex Libris staff participating from uh, both the North American office and Ex Libris headquarters in Jerusalem. There were 50 training sessions in the technical seminar, so it was quite a lot for the two days, and those training sessions were based on product streams, Alma, Primo, Cross Product, etc., um, and included an Ex Libris Developer Network presentations, a two-day Primo certification, and a one-day Alma hands-on. Um, most of the sessions were 90 minutes, some were half days, three and a half hours, a morning or an afternoon, and other sessions included hands-on. Um, the sessions that I found most benefit from were those relating to Primo APIs, the Alma APIs, and the Primo Central Index. The Primo APIs, um, what was good there was seeing some of the applications that were being used for those APIs. There are currently eight APIs for Primo, and some of the applications included Primo floor plans, new item lists, etc. Uh, for the Alma APIs, Josh Wiseman um, gave several presentations and he talked about using the APIs to expose configurations and data for use in other applications. He also talked about real-time integration using the APIs, so things like YBP Gobi interface and um, import-export of invoices, um, analytics. The Primo Central Index presentation was a really good overview of the PCI infrastructure and life cycle. Uh, the only, so, um, and including some stats on the current sizing of the index where there's over 900 million records and more than 200 publishers supplying data to PCI. Um, in the last year alone, PCI has doubled and its natural growth is about five million records a month. Um, what was good to know was that Ex Libris is working on a coverage report which will be updated on a weekly basis. 
um, indicating which titles are part of which collections and they hope to deliver this by the end of 2015. The only negative that I had from that presentation was that it was presented in the context of SFX and there was very little mention of the ALMA U Resolver, yet more than half of the audience would have been ALMA Primo users. Um, in terms of the, the ALUNA conference itself, it was hosted by the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis. Um, there were 603 participants, which is huge, it was really big. Uh, three years ago that conference, this conference was around 420, 450 participants, so uh, the last few years have seen a really substantial growth in the, um, not just in the sites using Ex Libris products in North America but also in the numbers attending the conference. There were a lot of people new people at this conference who were coming on board with ALMA and were coming to ALMA from um, other ILS, ILS other than Ex Libris products. Um, there were 157 presentations over the three days um, and most of those, present, those presentations were streamed in concurrent breakout sessions, so when it came to choosing your program and what, what presentations to go to, you're often having to make a decision between 10 presentations um, and presentations were, were scattered over three levels of the, the conference area, the hotel where the conference was held. Um, so that meant quite a lot of congestion in lifts and stairwells going up and down, swapping between sessions. Um, it was a really good conference. Um, focus, um, the Ex Libris part of the corporate update, I've got some stats there to give you some sizing on where Alma's at currently um, and where Primo's at in terms of the no overall number of institutions. 68% of the customer base is Alma Primo um, and the comparison of subscription versus licensed services to Ex Libris products is um, heavily subscription based now, 81% to 19% licensed. Uh, what was interesting was the Ex Libris 2015 focus on expert services where Ex Libris is looking to, um, to, to leverage expert services by offering consulting working with the customer after being in production for a period of time to assess workflows, configurations and processes and to highlight opportunities and insist, assist in implementing solutions. Extend, um, again working with the customer to extend usage of the products beyond core functionality and analyse to more fully realise the power of Alma Analytics beyond reporting. Um, it was really hard to come up with a top three of the presentations. Um, each Aluna has a distinct personality and is influenced by the location, by the hosting institution and um, University of Minnesota did an outstanding job. Um, the library staff were very visible uh, in the presentations they gave, um, in the facilitation along with the Aluna committee and in just supporting everyone throughout the conference. They were really easy to find uh, when we were going out to um, networking dinner and to the other events that were organised. They were on every corner directing people, making sure nobody got lost. Everyone was, was, um, was finding their way and, and, and that was really, really nice. Um, the three presentations that that I've listed here. Uh, the first one, Discovery Beyond Searching, was an Ex Libris presentation by Christine Stone and Mary Boxer. And what was really, really nice about this was the opportunity to see um, the new UI for Primo. Um, it's a very clean, light, more interactive user interface. No tabs, no pagination. Um, 
It will be released to SAS customers in February 2016 and available to local inst installations later in 2016. Um, their Ex Libris is starting a testing phase with five early testers uh, in the next few months. Using AP, ALMA APIs to implement bibliographic resource discovery, this was an interesting presentation by the University of Wisconsin-Madison who came up on ALMA Primo uh, very recently. I think their live date was the 20th of May. They were previously a Voyager site. Um, what, was, what was interesting about this presentation, uh, it was a very engaging presentation. One of the presenters had previously worked as a data strategist at OCLC and was very keen, is very keen to explore linked open data and is actively looking for ways to do that with their design of the interface. Um, the parting thoughts from that presenter was that um, data is there waiting for us to exploit it. Uh, none of this is possible without the APIs. Uh, Stand back and watch was, this was a really fun presentation. This is a um, University of Minnesota library staff presentation and they outlined their strategy for usability testing which encompasses a range from big formal tests. The university has a um, full-time usability consultants and a usability lab. So they, their testing encompasses a range from big full-time formal tests to small-scale monthly tests that the library staff do and which they, the library has integrated into their processes. The presentation included the scenarios that the library uses to run these tests. So, uh, for example, find an article online, find a book in a given library, find books by a given author, find articles on a research topic, um, and then some debrief questions at the end. And they also presented their results and how they had worked that, in, that used those results to inform their Re, reworking of the Primo UI. Um, so that, that was uh, really a really honest presentation um, and, and presented in, in the, con you know, she made it a fun topic. Um, in terms of takeaways, um, I've got four there. Uh, what was interesting and something that I've come away with is I'm much more aware of the rapid growth in the number of APIs available. Um, for instance, ALMA has gone from 21 to 90 APIs in the past year um, and also awareness of the push to document and share use cases for APIs, um, um, recognising the move from batch to real-time processing using the APIs, for instance, the Gobi API for all real-time ordering. Um, talking to people and seeing some of the presentations there, I became very aware that more and more sites are actively using tools, including software automated tools, um, to test the software and to measure performance. Um, interestingly, University of Minnesota have been comparing SFX with the Alma U Resolver and they're seeing um, a comparison in response times of 1.4 seconds with SFX versus 2.8 seconds with the Alma U Resolver. Orbis Cascade and Washington State University are doing a lot of performance monitoring with Nagios on Primo and using that to inform um, their analysis of how people are using Primo. Um, and KU Leuven um, also in their monitoring, they're doing a lot of Primo log analysis. Um, and what was nice, I think there were three of us there. There was Megan, Joanne and me. And so three people in a crowd of 603. Uh, I think it took me two days to find Joanne and, um, or two days to find Megan and three days to find Joanne among that crowd. Um, and so that, that was interesting, was um, in, a, in a, a group that big and in the presentations, um, for instance, VCU, Virginia Commonwealth University, gave a presentation on what they had done with Primo over the past year 
and they acknowledged Swinburne in their presentations, which was really, really nice, the work that Swinburne and, and Justin Kelly had done on the Primo UI and how that had influenced some of the decisions that VCU had made. And also in the linked open data meeting, it was really nice to hear um, Arif Shayon's presentation, so Arif, Dr. Arif Shayon's from University of New South Wales and he gave a presentation to the Linked Open Data Special Interest Working Group in December and people were talking about that presentation in, in the meeting at Aluna. So that was really nice too, to, to hear the, that and also to, to know that people were aware of us and what we were doing and were, were looking at what we were doing. and, and um, and using it. So I think that's that's pretty much it for me and I'll um, I'll hand back to you Jason to hand over to Megan. Great, thanks Sue. Now I'll just give the control back to myself. Okay, now hopefully everyone can now see a uh, presentation screen. Um, Megan, I'm just going to enable your microphone and then give you control. Right, like so, Great, and thanks. you should now have control. <laughs> <laughs> you now have the power. <laughs> Always good. Okay, so following on from uh, what Sue talked about, um, it was a huge uh, conference. I found it huge, and um, the choice that Sue talked about in terms of both the um, technical seminar and also a lunar was um, overwhelming. There were often more than one session that you wanted to go to in the same time slot. Um, so Monash sends a representative to um, both Igloo and Aluna most years um, and I had never been to Igloo before and I wanted to go um, mostly because I'd heard really good things from people about the technical seminar and I wanted to contrast that with the technical seminar that happens at Igloo. Um, so uh, let me just no, Jason, I haven't got key, um, desktop control. All right, let's see if I can do that again. Hmm. And there. And okay, let's try that. Okay. There we go. Ah. Better. Lights, yeah. camera, action. <laughs> Much better. Okay. Um, so I was really, yes, impressed with the um, <coughs> level of organisation um, from a learner. They gave us um, the program for both the technical seminar and the conference really early. And you can see the slide I've got on the screen, the range of um, sessions that were available, um, particularly at the technical seminar. Um, and I was equally impressed, as Sue was, to see the same number, the uh, really large number of ex libra staff that were at both the seminar and the conference and presenting. So I think there was over 30 of them, and it was um, it, they were a real resource to catch up and talk to about what was happening with different things in the products. So um, yeah, I, I was very favourably impressed. Um, so. Looking at the topics in the conference program, um, I picked out a few things too. I was interested in the Primo APIs, um, working with work orders in ELMA, uh, configuring and using Newstat, and um, paying fines um, for ELMA using the API. So um, when I went to that session, and I think it was, I'll talk about that a little bit later, um, uh, there was a sandbox environment set up using a PayPal um, payment system um, and it was just really interesting to see it up and working. Um, and in the conference, uh, I was interested in the linked open data like Sue was. Um, there were a number of sessions on Elmer Analytics which um, I attended and they were really interesting. Um, and then the usability testing that Sue's already talked about. So I thought I'd focus on um, only two things today. And the first one I'm going to talk about is the USTAT configuration usage. Um, 
I don't really have a feel for where Australian libraries, other Australian libraries are with um, work, getting uh, resources into USTAT and getting USTAT to deliver um, data into Elma Analytics, um, which is the focus that I had um, going to this session. So it was interesting to see what the US libraries were doing. Um, and at least the people who partic participated in this section were at the stage of just getting resources into USTAT and talking about um, what the limitations were and some of the limitations are here on the screen um, and also um, how they could use USTAT. And I was particularly interested in both the usage statistics, um, which I'm in an environment where the Australian dollar keeps falling and our uh, collection budgets keep sliding with it. It was really interesting to be able to see a way to um, do analysis um, of how our e-resources are performing and which ones we want to continue to use. So um, as I said, the thing that I was particularly interested in was integrating USTAT and Elm Analytics reporting. Um, so while the use data is extracted from USTAT, the cost information is actually drawn from the PO line information in ELMA and the reports are built uh, by uh, putting those two data sets together. Um, and that was really interesting to understand and also the um, frequency that the data is updated. Um, one of the pet hates I have with ELMA Analytics is that day delay. Um, so having a week delay for USTAT is probably going to be even more irritating. Um, so some of the out of the box um, statistics that uh, Exlibris has already got set up in the um, shared environment are things like cost per use for e-resources, cost per use for journals, um, package cost per use annual trends, title cost per use annual trends. I haven't played with these extensively yet. We've only got about um, 50 titles in our uh, USTAT environment at the moment and we're working towards, you know, hopefully a thousand. Um, but the data that we have now from those 50 titles, looking at these reporting information, it looks really exciting. So it was a development that I was particularly interested in. And then for the usage data, it's also uh, usage data based on uh, database, on journal platform, on publisher. So it was uh, the division of data and the way that you can break it down so long as the use data migrates over correctly was a really interesting development, I thought. Um, and like Sue, uh, I was interested in the online fine payment API. And this is particularly interesting for me because it means that we can, uh, being able to set up a uh, proof of concept by with a PayPal sandbox environment means that when we talk to our IT team and our finance team about developing this sort of integration, which um, is one of the challenges that happens in a big university, um, we'll also already have a working environment and that's quite exciting for me. So I've put that URL up there. It's the link into the development zone where uh, Josh Weissman, who did this presentation, has put all of the script, all of the um, uh, conceptual diagrams around how to build this integration. Um, and we've started working through it uh, to build our proof of concept and it seems to be working exactly as he describes it, which is um, really reassuring. And like Sue, I like the pragmatism that um, Ex Libris has chosen to develop API toolkits rather than try and build um, endless customization for people, giving us the freedom to do this work and be able to um, develop the customizations that we want is really useful. Um, but I agree it's also really important that once we've done the development, we share it as widely as possible. It's, um, it seems short-sighted to make everybody start from scratch without sharing the information around. And as always, at the um, 
both the conference and the technical seminar, I'm always impressed with Ex Libris's vision. Um, they may not be able to backfill with the practical uh, delivery of um, functionality that works within the timeframes that I'm looking for, but um, things like their uh, partnership with Campus M, which is a um, mobile um, application delivery platform that uh, they're going to start to work with um, for um, all of the Ex Libris products. I thought that was really interesting. I think it's good that they've started to look at different ways to deliver um, the sort of functionality that our customers are looking for without trying to um, deliver everything in-house, which is just, well, wasn't working in their old model. Um, and then things like the strategic um, directions in, implicit in the developments like um, using ELMA analytics and USTAT data to develop predictive reports to give us evidence-based information for major area source selection and looking at the development of PDA functionality, they're going to build that into a new tool that they're calling evidence-based selection. Now, I missed that session, so I'm not sure what the implications of that are, but it seemed I really like that they're always looking for ways to um, extend the product. And um, I'm very excited that they're looking to um, deliver uh, OBI statistical reporting for Primo and getting rid of BERT, which is a wonderful thing. Um, so yeah, I was very impressed by both the um, technical seminar and the conference. It was huge and full on, but um, definitely worth attending. So that's everything I had. I might pass you back now to Joanne, who will do the last presentation. Great, thanks Megan. Right, I'll just juggle around. Joanne, I'll just can convey the control across to you in just a moment. So bear with me for a second. Here we go. It's done and right, Joan, I've un unmuted your mic and you should now have keyboard control. So just you want to try and give that a go and see if that works okay for you. No, it doesn't seem to be moving. I'll just try that again because it seems to sometimes need to be done twice. Here we go. No. All right. <laughs> what I'll do. I'm just going to make a change in the settings again. Right, try that now, Joanne. Sorry about the delay. It's okay. No, it still doesn't want to work, unfortunately. All right. Do you want me to? Oh, there we go. Is that you doing that? That seems to flick through. Yep. Seems to be a bit of a delay. Okay. I, I right, think it's just yeah, there's a delay. Okay. Cheers. Okay. Um, I pretty much concentrated on Alma sessions at Aluna. Um, so the, the project working group on licensing that um, reported back um, from their work. Um, they were mainly looking at functionality um, around record structure, workflow, which doesn't currently exist, um, information to do with terms, and then analytics and reporting from inside Alma. So um, Exlibris is going to introduce some new features um, throughout 2015 and 2016. So in 2015, they will introduce the ability to link to closed and cancelled orders and to multiple PO lines. They will enable the adding of locally defined terms and creating local control, control vocabulary. In 2016, they will look at interop interoperability with group settings for electronic inventory read-only roles and the functionality to export from the licensing tab using tools. 
there's a couple of areas that Exolibris want further clarification with before they will um, move any further with. Um, this is to do with making licensing part of the physical workflow, adding local fields, um, distinguishing between different types of licenses, the flexibility to and how license terms will be discoverable within ALMA, and then how, the, how to add and reorder terms within the research configuration area, because at the moment that's very number based and people weren't happy with that. Um, in relation to developments in the community zone, at the moment there is 30 people involved in ma maintaining the knowledge base, but um, Exlibris um, acknowledged that it's not always up to date and they're finding it hard to keep it up to date. At the moment it's being updated by auto updates from publishers which have been provided in a variety of different ways. Um, regular records supplied from Consor, but the and then recently they're moving towards more reliance on the community's um, libraries contributing records. And through the technical seminar this was one thing that was really being pushed, that libraries need to take control and add records, um, edit records, um, to try and keep it up to date because they just can't do it themselves. Um, one of the ways they are going to help libraries be able to do this is by um, allowing us to um, contribute portfolios. So in the May update we could start contributing free collections, um, three por portfolios to free collections. And I noticed in the June update, it's giving us access to contribute um, whole electronic collections. But the problem with being able to contribute the electronic collections is that um, you can only contribute records you've created. You can't contribute records that you've downloaded from OCLC and added your portfolio to. A uh, product working group is, has been set up to look at guidelines for editing um, community zone records. This is being chaired by Steve Sandal. Uh, in relation to um, editing records and ISSNs, at the moment ISSNs are not editable. The reason for this is they're still being used for linking purposes. So once um, they're no longer being used for linking purposes, we'll be able to edit them, which will be handy. Um, and the other th um, update around the community zone is Exlibris is working with a number of ebook publishers, Springer, Project Muse, Ebri, um, are the main ones, so they can try and get some better quality records. Okay, um, so in relation to Serial's Predictive Check-In, I attended the session at the technical seminar as well as the presentation from the University of Washington at the Lunar session. These were both very similar, taking you through how to set up um, Predictive Check-In. I also gave a presentation on Predictive Check-In, which is available on the NSREG site. I was looking more at the problems we encountered when we were trying to set up um, predictive check-in, as well as how to um, adapt the patterns that are available in the other box templates to meet our needs. So the things that came out of the other presentations were that in the purchase order line, you need to make sure you've got a sub-interval and an expected receipt date set so that the issues are predicted at the right time. So in the 853 field, you can select, in the holdings record, you can select um, templates. The idea is to select the closest template you can get and then amend it. So by either putting in what issues are published for that particular journal or what issues uh, you want to admit. And then you need, also need to add when the volume number rolls over. And then the final part of the process is the next predictive information box where you add all the same information you added into the 853 field. And then you need to adjust the issue date, so it, um, predicting for when the first issue is expecting. If you don't do that, that seems to be causing problems with the predictions.
Okay. Um, the other presentation that I attended that I found very useful was uh, using macros to work in Alma. So University of Washington has started doing some testing around macro products because they, like a number of people in the audience, were getting a number of complaints from their staff about how much clicking is involved with Alma. They um, are trialling two products, Selenium IDE, which uh, looks at browser autom automation. So they're using that to set up the basic macro. And then they're using auto hotkey to create some shortcut keys. Uh, it seems to be working well. Um, the one thing they f um, that came up was about response times because of the delays in opening some areas of Alma as well as updating some areas. With the, with the delay factor in that, that needs to be um, factored in when you are setting up um, the macro for Selenium. So they did a number of tests with response times. In general, they found they were pretty consistent, so they were able to just record the macro and allow a bit of time. At the end of the presentation, people were asking about Macro Express and how that works. They had tested it and didn't find it worked very well, but a couple of other libraries who were um, just about to implement, I think it was the University of Wisconsin said they got it to work. So there's going to be a bit more communication between um, University of um, Washington and University of Wisconsin around that. So hopefully they'll put out some information on the list about what they discover. So what I got out of the conference was it was a great networking opportunity, especially with other libraries and members of Xlibris support teams. As Susan and Megan have mentioned, there was just so many Xlibris staff there. It was just a brilliant opportunity to be able to go and talk to them and ask questions. I also found it reassuring to find that everyone was experiencing the same problems with Alma and were trying to get the same answers to the same questions I had because you sort of find it a bit isolating sometimes and not sure if it's just something that's happening at your end or it's a global issue. And um, I found that I went to a couple of presentations where I knew a little bit about but not enough. So if you, so you need, really need to go to presentations that are discussing areas you want to learn more about but you need to have a bit of basic knowledge to be able to understand them. So that's it from me. I'll hand back to Jason. Great, thanks Jan. Okay, now we'll have some time for some questions, so if everyone bears with me for just a second, I'm just going to unmute the microphones of our uh, three presenters today. Um, Joanne, your microphone's already unmuted. Uh, Megan, I've just unmuted your microphone. And okay. same for Sue. So everybody who's uh, participating today should have a chat box. So I'm thinking if you've got a question, please do type it in um, into the chat box and send it to me because um, I'm watching it. And then I'll, um, you know, I can read the question out or I can enable your, your microphone if you've got quite an in-depth question. Ah, here we are from Swinburne Posse. Um, are there screenshots of the new Primo UI? Um, I I don't have screenshots of the UI, but I would um, I would take that back to Xlibris and push them to to organ, or to Holly, and and push for a sneak peek demo or something of the UI. Uh, I think that would be really good. It's it's. There's enough there that they could show you that you could get a flavour of what's coming. Um, I think I think that would be a nice thing. That's great. Thanks, Sue. I've um, got a question from Alan Manifold. Um, was there any interesting discussion from Ex Libris about future directions or initiatives? Megan, do you want to take that one? 
maybe I'll pick that up if you like. Um, a lot of the corporate presentations that Ex Libris did were looking very much at um, uh, particularly focusing on using um, analytics in Elma to be able to um, make informed decisions. So they were really looking at ideas around big data and being able to um, uh, get a comprehensive picture of how your collections are working and what your users are doing in um, Elma and uh, well, staff in Elma, but um, your uh, users working in Primo and that was uh, part of the justification. Uh, I think I spoke to Marie about this um, for getting OBI as the primary um, analytics delivery uh, system for Primo. Um, they're acknowledging that it's difficult to do any analysis of um, user patterns or comprehensive analysis of user patterns in Primo at the moment using the BERT system. So that was quite interesting. Um, Sue, did you have comments? I know they did talk a little bit about um, hmm, I'm trying to think of there was a lot of discussion around linked data that I also yeah. found really interesting, but that wasn't that wasn't really an ex libris initiative, that was more a user group initiative. Yeah, and ex libris was in those sessions and again it was the emphasis on um, help us help us to work together, give Ex Libris and the community working together in partnership and Ex Libris asking um, people to to flag um, use cases and, and what they're trying to do so that um, there can be that partnership to move forward and, and achieve outcomes. Um, there was also um, a lot of talk around research data management and um, doing more with, with um, what, what was lacking, mm. what, I, what I was looking for at Aluna and I didn't get was um, talk about digitisation in Alma. That to me yes, was... there wasn't really any discussion of that workflow or, well for um, APAC, well for Australia particularly with our copyright issues, the limitations of that workflow. Yeah. And you could see when some of the ex Libris staff were signing on in sessions, you could see where there was a whole extra menu in Alma um, that we don't have access to. Mm. So there's development work there, but um, even glimpsing that menu, you couldn't quite see um, the context. Alan's um, just, um, Alan's just asked another question just along the same sort of lines. He's saying, was there any discussion about discrepancies between the SAS and local implementations for new features? Um, behind the scenes, yes, a lot. Mm. <laughs> um, and um, that's an ongoing discussion. And also Swinburne has asked, was there any discussion about BibFrame? Yes, BibFrame. I think there was a presentation on BibFrame and it was certainly mentioned. And I'm sorry, I'm s paging through my notes. <laughs> Um, it was, it's Joanne here, it was mentioned at the Alma update, it's something that they're going to start testing I think next year to see whether what functionality they can introduce. They're going to start off with the link data and then move on to testing a blue frame. Great, thank you. Um, are there any other questions anyone has? Um, we've probably got time for one or two more, I think. Um, just... In terms of linked open data and bib frame, um, Asaf mentioned an ex libris document that is a vision statement. Um, which I haven't gone back to look at, but I'm assuming is on the doc portal. Great, thanks Sue. Right, well I haven't got any more questions popping up in the in the chat box. Um, before I switch um, on, oh no, sorry Sue. Sorry, Go. sorry Jason, I just wanted to add to Bibframe and Alma and um, Joanne's comments, 
it's a phased approach and um, the first phase is importing and exporting as bib frame and a crosswalk, crosswalk to the native format and phase two is for bib frame to coexist with Mark DC um, as native formats. Um, and in terms of linked open data and Primo, I've got a comment here to check the April 2015 release, which I'm, would have been the Primo April 2015 release notes. Um, what what Oren emphasised, and um, Joanne, was this in the in that bib frame meeting, or was it in a another meeting? Maybe it was in the linked open data meeting. Um, the importance of getting a sense of the usefulness of what Ex Libris is doing um, and, and lessons learned from implementations and that's where the community has a role to, um, and a place in, in helping Ex Libris to get that sense by communicating the lessons learned from our implementations um, or, the, or working together on that. Great, thanks Sue. Um, Alan's also asked, was there an executive Q&A session and what was answered? Oh yes, there was an executive Q&A and what they, they did it a bit differently this year. They called it strategic conversations, um, which was a, where they, uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, they had up on the stage sitting in armchairs, um, oh the strategic conversation was a separate panel. Yes, they did do a Q&A session. Um, Actually, They're I found quite defensive. Yeah. yeah, I found this. I, I don't know. Megan and I have, and, and Joanne, we haven't had a chance to talk about, or we haven't talked about this. Um, but Megan, my impression compared to the Q and A sessions at Igloo mm -hmm. was that this one was a bit tame. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there wasn't much being said. Exactly, and and they weren't really issues. It just seemed a bit off the mark. Um, I think the major issue that I can remember them tackling was what initiatives they were going to do to reduce their carbon footprint. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I've got, you know, a quarter of a page notes in Scribble, which was, you know, nothing compared to what I would take away mm. from an Aluna Q&A. Um, mm. and, and basically what I'm reading, writing here, what I've got here is that Alma D is missing. Um, Pascal did ask a good question around the differences and distinctness of Alma D versus Rosetta. I thought that was relevant. Um, I think there must have been another question about um, Ex Libris pushing out the um, root cause analysis via the oh, yes, there was. Ex Libris um, status page um, rather than you having to go to the doc portal three months later to get the analysis. Mm. Um, um, and there was talk around the roadmaps and getting better. Um, getting getting to know more than the you know, not having the Primo roadmap. Well the Primo roadmap is out even if it is only for twenty fifteen and it came out halfway through the year. Um, and then the Alma roadmap has come out since the conference. Um, the strategic conversation session was where they were trying to do something a bit different. Um, in engaging people in, I guess, a future directions. Did you feel, mm. Megan? Um, it was... Aaron, yeah. And Oren was trying to get some themes for the discussion along the lines of learning and teaching and um, he referenced the Horizon Report um, yeah. Summer 2014 by ARL um, and the Ithaca SNR Report. Um, talked about research support, research data management, open access. Um, And there was quite an interesting discussion in one section around um, demonstrating relevance to the University of the Library and that um, 
whether the generation of data from systems is a particularly effective tool to do that. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, everyone. Well, I think we're just about out of time now, and I don't have any more questions in the chat box. So before I flick on everybody's microphone so we can say thank you to our three excellent presenters, um, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's logged on today. I know we're all busy, so thank you for participating um, and getting on board today. Um, I'm glad the technology held together and worked well. Um, <laughs> and um, also, as I mentioned earlier on, we, we are recording this, so we'll um, put a um, edited version up. Obviously, we'll remove all the chitter chatter at the beginning. Um, and then we'll put that up on the Android site. So I'll just enable everybody's microphones now and thank you very much to our three most excellent presenters. Thanks, Jason. You're, You're welcome. Welcome.